Hi, I'm Shana Lipner Grover from Sage Country Herbs, and we're here in San Diego at Balboa Park's Trees for Health Garden, and we're going to go visit some of our plant friends. Another one of the medicinal trees from around the world, also coming from Asia, is this one, Ylang Ylang. Ylang Ylang is known scientifically as Kananga odorata, part of the Anonaceae family. Its common name is the perfume tree. So I don't know what common name actually speaks so eloquently and direct about what this tree is known for. The flowers of Ylang Ylang are gorgeous and they smell like heaven. Ylang Ylang is native to tropical Asia. We're talking the Philippines, Madagascar, many other areas that it's been introduced as well, including in America. Now, Ylang Ylang has these it's this gorgeous tree that ranges from a tall shrub up to a 40, 45 foot tree. And it's got these really cool drooping branches. Now, drooping is another aspect of this tree that is common of its flowers. They're called pendant. It means they hang down like a pendant ne necklace. And the flowers of Ylang Ylang have a long flower stem with long yellow, sometimes slightly twisted petals. They are so beautiful. Ylang Ylang is widely known in the world of perfume. That's not the only place that it really stands out, but it has definitely made its mark in the perfume world. It's one of the primary ingredients in the most popular perfume around the world called Chanel No. 5. Now Ylang Ylang has a very strong aromatic in its flowers in particular. They are steam distilled to get the essential oil out. Now, the essential oil is very comparable to other famous essential oils from flowers like jasmine. It is strong yet delicate, fresh but very floral. Really a beautiful, beautiful scent. And then it's been used in so many different perfumes, candles, moisturizers. I mean, really anything that you can put a lovely scent to, Ylang Ylang has been used for it. The ground up flowers are not only steam distilled for their essential oil, they're also used medicinally. Just grinding up the flowers and making what's called a poultice is applied to things like skin inflammation, bug bites that are really itchy. It's even been used successfully for dandruff. Aromatherapeutically is really where Ylang Ylang stands out. It's been used aromatherapeutically for things like anxiety and depression, nervous tension, general emotional stress. But because it also affects things like stress, it's also used internally, both aromatherapeutically and actually taking it in in the form of teas for things like elevated blood pressure. When someone has chronic elevated blood pressure, it's called hypertension. Hypertension is another contributing factor to things like cardiovascular disease. So not only the smell, as aromatherapeutic, but also the taking in is affecting some of our biggest and most intense debilitating diseases. Beyond that, Ylang Ylang internally is used for things like headaches, which is really wonderful, stomach ailments, as well as some lung issues like asthma. But one of the areas that it really shines the most in terms of medicinal value is with symptoms of malaria. Ylang Ylang grows natively in areas that host mosquitoes that tend to carry malaria. So when you're thinking about what do indigenous in the area use, they use what grows around them. And Ylang Ylang has actually been used for many, many years, helping to control the symptoms of malaria. One of the other medicinal actions that tends to grab a lot of attention these days is anti-inflammatory. And while Ylang Ylang absolutely has some anti-inflammatory actions, one of my favorite aspects about this is the idea of it being a euphoriant or an exhilarant. This is a basically something that upon smelling or ingesting makes you feel light. It uplifts your spirits. It's part of why it's known as an antidepressant because it has that euphoriant activity. It makes you feel more grounded and feel more connected. Imagine that. The flowers are not the only part of this medicinal tree. The bark is also used from the side branches. The bark is generally going to be simmered or what's called decocted. And it's been used for everything from gout to rheumatism to ulcers. It's also been shown to be highly antimicrobial 
And one of the biggest claims to, to modern fame is it's been shown in petri dishes to be effective against biofilms. Now, biofilms are basically a defense mechanism by a lot of our pathogens that can create antibiotic resistant infections. The resistant part is often that biofilm. And a lot of our antibiotics don't take out that biofilm, so then they're not as effective on the pathogen itself. When we combine things that are effective at breaking down biofilms along with things that are really effective at breaking down the pathogen itself, now we're looking at a combination of nature and nurture to really help our bodies be able to move through these modern infections that can be really difficult to deal with. Ylang Ylang is known for its gorgeous flowers that smell amazing. And while that may take center stage, it's also important to remember everything living has more to it than just the thing that it's popular for. So Ylang Ylang, you probably already know this plant or the smell of it because you use perfume or you light a candle or you have a massage oil. So you probably already have a relation with this plant without even knowing it. So come on down and check out this beautiful tree. Give a smell of it directly.